Bom dia and welcome to Madeira, the island of sun, colors and happiness. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Madeira and its beautiful capital Funchal. With its white boulevards, historic squares and red roof houses, Funchal is arguably the prettiest town on the island. In the previous episode, I wandered around Funchal exploring some of its main attractions. We saw the historic center with century-old buildings, took a stroll down its hip art district, as well as walked around Funchal's harbor front, which back in the day used to be an old fisher's neighborhood. As I've previously mentioned, there was so much more to Funchal than what was covered in the first episode. So get your snacks ready and let's see what else Funchal has to offer. Walking around Funchal, I kept running into these beautiful art installations made of flowers. At first, I thought it was just a part of city decor, and that's until I saw hundreds of people on the streets wearing the most colorful dresses I ever seen. I was lucky to randomly find myself in the middle of Madeira's Flower Festival, a cultural event associated with local traditions of celebrating the island's flora that goes almost a century back. Normally you need to get a ticket for the main event, but luckily for me I was mistaken for a journalist and given credentials to shoot behind the scenes as well as a premium seat at the arena. I happily accepted the offer and fully embraced the celebration, and I can assure you being a part of this event will charge you with positive emotions and joy for a while. Madeira is well known for its local produce, and the best place to experience it is to visit Mercado dos Labradores, or Funchal's Farmer's Market. Decorated with flowers, azulejos, and greeted by local ladies wearing national costumes, Mercado dos Labradores offers a variety of goods, mainly dominated by fruit and vegetables. However, the market also offers a wide range of souvenirs and if you opt for something exotic, Madeira's famous and somewhat scary looking scabbard fish can be also tried here. Because of its volcanic origins, many settlements in Madeira are scattered across the hills. One of them is the suburb of Funchal, a beautiful neighborhood of Monte. In the past, a place of pilgrimage, it is located about 500 meters above Funchal. Today, in order to get here, a unique cable car ride can be taken from Funchal, offering stunning views along the way. The ride itself takes about 20 to 25 minutes and the experience is unforgettable.
The route for a modern cable car uh, connecting the city of Punchal and the suburb of Monte was chosen to replace the old Monte Railway. Back in the day, uh, people who lived in Monte uh, they came down to Funchal and they were selling their local products uh, at the market there and then they were returning home using the old railway. That railway was um, operating from 1800s up until 1940s. The modern version of the cable car began construction in 1999 and it was done in about a year and a half. Right now, it's more of a touristy attraction. One-way trip costs 11 euro. Um, the round trip is 16 euro, and they even have combo tickets where they include the round trip, and they give you a ticket to see the botanical garden here. Personally, I think it's worth at least going one way uh, to just uh, see the, the the whole picture of. Uh, Funchal and Monte. It's pretty nice scenery, but it's up to you. You can get here by bus or uh, by car if you have a car. Um, it's still, still very nice trip. And one of the reasons why you should make this trip is Monte's tropical garden. Previously a part of private estate, it offers a rich variety of exotic plants and trees. In 1988, Monte Palace Garden was donated by Madeiran businessman to the Berardo Foundation, which was the beginning of the creation of a small paradise on the hills of Monte. If you are looking to take a break from busy streets of Funchal and experience something truly beautiful, this is your place. A short walk from the tropical garden towards Montes Cathedral, you will find a unique site. Around Grange Hotel Balmont, dozens of local men called Cajeros offer a unique experience of the bag and run, an ancient traditional ride in the basket slides down Montes Hills. These basket slides are very important in life of Madeiran people. This is the traditional means of transportation that uh, poor folks uh, used before uh, coming down the hill into the city. Um, no wheels, no steering wheel, nothing. It's just uh, two guys steering it with their uh, foot and down you go. The bug and ride has been a popular attraction for almost a century and today people still enjoy it as much as they did back then, making their way back down to Funchal. In the previous episode, we covered the western part of Madeira. Starting at Funchal, we reached the westernmost point of Ponto do Pargo and eventually ended the journey at the beautiful village of Santana. In this episode, we are moving towards the east coast of the island. It is Madeira's most heavily populated area with many resort towns along the way. Characterized by rock landscapes, steep valleys and gorgeous ravines, it is filled with coastal and forest trails offering breathtaking views. If you are enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, I'd highly appreciate that. The goal is to start at Funchal, hit the easternmost point of Ponta do São Lourenço and finish the trip at the picturesque village of Cujal das Freiras. Ok, let's get going. Winding coastal roads lead to my first stop, the epicenter of Madeira's wicker industry, a small village of Camacha. If you are looking for a beautiful handmade piece of furniture made of Madeira's willow ends, Camacha's wicker factory is a must visit. A few kilometers south of here, a coastal town of Canisu can be located. The long age Canisu started expanding rapidly in the early 2000s as a number of hotels and guest houses began to appear on its hills. 
As a result, Kanisu was awarded a status of a city in 2005. The most popular attraction here is the Statue of Christ, the Christ to Hei, a late 1920s mini version of Rio's Christ the Redeemer, however built four years before its Brazilian cousin. The statue was financed by a local family and created by French artists. The history behind it is quite gruesome. You see, up until late 18th century, only Catholics were allowed to be buried on the island, and if you weren't one, well, your body would be thrown off these cliffs into Atlantic Ocean. The statue was built in remembrance of those tragic practices according to the first legend. Another legend states that it was simply put there to welcome Madeira's gas coming from the ocean. To be honest, I prefer this one more. Before reaching the easternmost point of Madeira, let's stop at one of the oldest settlements on the island, a cozy fishing village of Canisal. Mostly known for its natural black sand beaches, Canisal offers a bit of everything, from old fishing traditions to diving lessons at the local school to whaling museum. Here you can also savor local seafood delicacies at very reasonable prices, as there are not that many tourists. Canisal is the land of rich traditions and a great place to go to the beach or to explore its coastal trails through its volcanic hills. Every year the parish holds a large celebratory feast as well as procession of Our Lady of Mercy. It is a fisherman's way of expressing gratitude to the Virgin Mary. The ceremony includes decorating the boats and carrying the statue of Mary into the sea, attracting hundreds of people. In order to be ready for my next stop, a hike along the coastal trail around here, I decided to get a quick exercise and head towards the eastern cliffs of Madeira. Despite its arid look, Canisal offers one of the most beautiful landscapes of Madeira. Ponto de Sao Lorenzo with its small bay and adjacent islet is a masterpiece created by nature. I came here to hike around these cliffs, but the first thing I had to do is just to sit down and embrace this beauty. follows Sao Lorenzo Point and ends at Sardinia Port. It's about 3 kilometers long and takes around 2 hours to complete. By the way, you will see the sign with PR abbreviation followed by a number scattered across the island. PR stands for Pequena Rutas or small routes and these are the trails officially approved and recommended by the regional government of Madeira. These trails are in good condition, but somewhat undulating, and it is up to you how close you want to get to the edges. I only did half of the hike, but it was enough to discover a new Madeira, a geologically dramatic, bursting with exotic flora and fauna place that took my breath away. So I'm at the very eastern point of the uh, island of Madeira right now, uh, Porto uh, São Lourenço, and uh, this looks like nothing that I've seen so far. Completely deserted with the red sand, it feels like I'm on Mars or something. Uh, I must say so far Madeira has been very very impressive. The contrast changes from uh, uh, green hills to rocky mountains to vibrant cities to small quiet villages to completely deserted places like this. Um, I very much love it because it makes uh, traveling uh, around the island so much more fun and uh, by far I'm really 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 impressed with Madeira.
before reaching my final destination, I stop at the northeast village of Porto da Cruz. It is one of the original settlements on the island, and sugarcane was once cultivated here. Before the development of roads in Madeira, Porto da Cruz was one of the busiest places on the island, due to its calm harbor and several sugarcane factories operating in full capacity. Today much has changed and Porto da Cruz is a quiet coastal town. The only reminder of its prosperous past is the remaining rum and sugarcane factory, Agenu do Norci. In the previous episode I have already visited a similar factory in Calieta on the west coast. However, if you decide to skip the west part of the island, just know that you'll have a chance to visit one here on the east coast with a great selection of rum and other goods. Nested in a vast mountain ravine surrounded by high volcanic cliffs, the picturesque village of Hural das Freiras is a true hidden gem of Madeira. It is accessible by long and winding mountain roads tunneled through the rock. Silence and solitude rewards the visitors to this lofty heights. The village itself is a quiet and sleepy place with about 2,000 inhabitants, mostly engaged in agriculture. The history of Huralta Freiras has deep religious roots and is concentrated around the nuns of the Santa Clara order. Village's main church, Nossa Senhora do Livramento, serves as a symbol of its origins. Brightly decorated inside, it is a baroque-style building overlooking the valley. You see, because of its geographical location, uh, the island of Madeira was a subject to pirate invasions. And so when in 15th century, the French pirates um, sailed to the shores of Madeira, the nuns from uh, Funchal area decided to run up north and hide in the mountains. And these nuns were from the order of Santa Clara. They were given this land to settle and they settled in between two hills in the valley. Hence, the place is called the Valley of Nuns. They built a small settlement here and until now this village still exists here. Visiting Hural das Freiras, I quickly realized why this was such an ideal location to hide out. The village is almost completely hidden from the outside world, with steep mountains on all sides, and was only connected to Madeira's road network in 1959. I was also able to find an original house where the nuns used to live. Here you can learn about their life in isolation, as well as their traditions and customs. The valley of the nuns is frequently wet and covered in mist, which is ideal condition for chestnut growing. Historically, Hural das Freiras has been a center of their cultivation and production of different chestnut products that you can find in one of the local shops along with other souvenirs. Hural das Freiras is a mystique and extremely picturesque place and it was a perfect final stop on my east coast journey around Madeira. I spent a few hours here around sunset, admiring the views of this place before heading back to Funchal, in anticipation of the next day, as the most exciting part of the journey was about to begin. Music